internet is never going to happen. It's never going to take off. And he even dropped some great nuggets like this. Uh, do our computer pundits lack all common sense? The truth is no online database will replace your daily newspaper. No CD-ROM, well, who uses CD-ROMs, uh, can take the place of a, co a competent teacher. And no computer network will change the way our government works. That last one is fascinating there. Uh, then he goes on to say, uh, our MIT lab media person predicts that we'll soon buy books and newspapers straight over the internet. Uh, sure. Then there's cyber businesses. We're promised instant catalog shopping. Just point and click for great deals. We'll order airline tickets over the network, make restaurant reservations, negotiate sales contracts. Stores will become obsolete. So how come my local mall does more business in an afternoon than the entire internet handles in a month? So I bring this up because when you have something new and innovative on the horizon, it's natural for people to dismiss it. It's natural for people to uh, be cynical because we've seen a lot of things come up and say, oh, this is the next big, big thing. This is the next big thing. And, and then if, play, if fades out, it doesn't happen. But I'm telling you, when it comes to esports, this is this is the thing, and it's not going away. And here's why: our kids are changing the media landscape. When you look at it, this Generation Z, they're no longer watching TV. There's a complete change in how they consume media, and there's no going back. When we look at it over the time, where are they going to? So here, this top line is kids in 2013, and this is week hours weekly spent watching television. You can see the drop from kids in 2013 to 2018. It's bigger when you look at the teenage market. You see teenagers in 2013 were watching here, and now they're down here. We can jump over using a DVD or Blu-ray. You can see the drop there, but here's where you see your increases. Using a gaming console, you see a marginal increase here with uh, kids from 2013 to 2018. You see a bigger increase here from 2013 to 2018, but this is the big one here. You see using an internet connected device has gone up from 2013 to 2018 amongst kids and teenagers, something that was non-existent just five years ago. When we look closer at gaming, your boys in your building, 92% of them will more than likely have access to a video game console and 97% will be playing games via their console and computer or phone. Girls, 75% have a council, 83% same thing. So what is this telling us? Our teens aren't watching television anymore. They're consuming their media through online platforms and they're heavily involved in gaming. Which then I get the question a lot, are they watching video games? And if you ever Google anything about esports, you see people like Jimmy Kimmel and others mocking the fact that people are actually watching other people play video games, which I completely understand. And I kind of tongue in cheek push back, like what's the difference of watching people play football and you going out and playing football, but Hey, I get it. It's a different medium. So again, people have legitimate questions or can just kind of question it because they don't understand. So are they watching video games? The answer is yes. So this is 2018 and this is viewership for college age students or younger. And you look here, the final four, the Super Bowl. Then there's one of the biggest esports right now is League of Legends. And it has a world championship every year. And 200 million of that Generation Z population tuned in to watch the League of Legends world championship. This isn't just a phenomenon like that it has happened just overnight because you have big companies actually tracking this and they're very much aware of it. So in 2014, Amazon put down a nearly billion dollars for a site where you watch people play video games. That site is called Twitch. And that sounds crazy. Who would drop a billion dollars on a company that specializes in allowing people to watch other people play video games? And here's why. I know this pie chart is hard to read. You don't really need to read what's in here. You just need to look at the shapes and the colors. Right here, this is the share of live video streaming by traffic volume. Twitch has almost 50% of it over things like ESPN, MLB, uh, WWE, which I didn't know had a streaming platform, but that's probably because I'm not a big professional wrestler fan. But Amazon put money down on this because they saw the future coming. And this is from Business Insider, and this is their data. But they understood back in 2014 that this is where 
the generations below us are going and this is where they're consuming their media. So we can have our own perspectives and thoughts and experiences in life, but I don't think we can deny the fact that this is where our kids are seeking entertainment and where they're engaged. The other thing you can do is just follow the money. When you look at it, you got companies like MasterCard partnering with Riot, which produces League of Legends. Coca-Cola signing multi-year deals with Overwatch, which is put out by Blizzard. And that's the number, a number two a big player in the esports realm. Michael Jordan to Drake investing millions of dollars in esports. You even have uh, athletic companies like the Golden State Warriors buying esports teams. And that's because esports revenue is expected to top 1 billion worldwide for the first time in 2019. So this, the question of, is this a thing? The answer is yes, it is. And so again, you may already be a believer and you may just be nodding. Yep. 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 Is right. Others of you may be skeptics and it's fair to be skeptical, but I'm, telling you when you look when you look at what is occurring with our students when you look at what people are putting their money behind where you look at where this is emerging there's no doubting that this is indeed a thing and this is something our kids are into and because they're into it we need to pay attention to it so why should your school get in on this why do you need this in your building so my why as a principal i know we have some administrators in 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 the group and i'm excited that you're here uh, I have a lot of whys. I don't know how you pluralize why, but these are, these are two of my big ones. I want all of my students to feel like they belong. When they walk in this building, I want them to feel like Hickman is a place for them that not only meets, meets their needs, but understands them and supports them. Because I know if they feel that way, I have a better chance of increasing their academic performance so they leave here with the skills they need to be successful in the world. And by that, and to that second point, I'm in the opportunity business. I also see my school as an opportunity engine. I want to give my kids the ability when they walk out of here, they don't have to beg anybody for anything. They can demand what they want. They have opportunity at their fingertips. So we've done things like bring, bring in internships. We've brought in job interviews. We've partnered with our city so that our kids can go job shadow. We've done all kinds of stuff like this. And these are the two things that, that guided my approach to esports. So when we talk opportunity, I showed you that graph of increase and in, in other things like that. Here's another one that, will, I, that blew me away. From in 2018, 2019, there's $15 million in college scholarships that will be awarded by schools. It's $15 million that my students have the ability to try to get to help give them access to a college education. You can see that has grown somewhat exponentially or linear, I guess, if my math teachers would, would yell at me, but it has grown, let's just say quite a lot over the past years as more and more colleges come online and understand how impactful this is uh, to our students and to their own schools. And here in Missouri alone, this is just a few of the schools of the colleges that are offering scholarships uh, to play esports. Uh, Mizzou was actually just on the radio this morning talking about their esports program. And Mill Valley, uh, their coach came to our League of Legends championship last year and talk to two of our students about playing esports there. And one of my students, who I'll talk about later, who wasn't even going to finish high school, was considering going there simply because he knew he could continue his education and get money to play esports. So this is something, this is an opportunity that is present for us as educators in our state. The other opportunity that exists is the emerging job market. When you have something that's about to eclipse $1 billion in 2019, you better believe there is a ton of jobs that are being created around it. So this, it's, I know it's kind of hard to read, but this is just the page I took off of Riot. So again, Riot produces League of Legends. Look at all the different job fields that are occurring. Yes, you have your normal STEM type things like you would be associated, like game design or UX design. Anybody can explain that to me, I would appreciate it. I don't know what it is. But if you also take a look, you have other things, okay? Product management, legal, you got a kid going to law, how cool would it be to say, hey, you can be a lawyer at that game company that you love playing their game for. Finance, facilities, esports operation, development management. These are all jobs that have nothing to do with coding or anything else like that. It's simply engaged around gaming. So if you can take a kid's interest in gaming, maybe they're a great programmer, fantastic. Guide them this way. If they're not, you can still use their hobby to get them to turn that into a career. And you know when you hook that, 
then you've unlocked their potential. Then you can help. It makes a lot easier for them to sit through that government class when they know that there's a career in something they love at the end of the tunnel. But this is why you should really care about high school esports. As educators, we're in this business for our kids. That is why we do this. We don't do it for any other reason. We surely don't do it for the pay. And this is where I have seen the biggest growth. So I want to give you a warning real quick. I'm going to play two videos for you. So if you may want to be mindful of your audio, I will do my best to control it here and keep it down a little bit. Uh, but I want to share two videos with you that I think really uh, encapsulates what you can expect to see from your students, because I've not only seen it in our building, I've also seen it around the state with other schools as I've talked with them and they've shared their story with me. So the first video I'm going to show, show you is a quick uh, snippet uh, our first esport event we did in the uh, fall of 2017. And when I show it to you, you're going to hear some music and you're going to probably see some cool setups and games and everything else like that. I want you to really pay attention to what you hear. I want you to listen to how the students are talking. I want you to hear what you hear in the background because I think that really drives home how impactful this is. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to do my best to control the volume off the, uh, off the bat. Uh, but uh, I think this is really beneficial for everyone to see. Yeah, you can. And I open the door. He's like, "Wait, no, you can't." <laughs> <laughs> First esports match. Yeah. Yeah. news story, and I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. So that was our first event. And I remember that event because um, I know a lot of you probably don't know what I look like, so you didn't pick up on it. Uh, but I was invited to do some of the play-by-play -play because we streamed it on Twitch so that people could watch it. And we had 100 people show up. And when I was there streaming it, we were in between matches. And there was this dad from Rockbridge. And for those who don't know, Hickman and Rockbridge have a pretty big rivalry. And this dad was just completely jacked up. Like he was just so cheering loudly. Like you could hear him over everybody in the auditorium. He wasn't being inappropriate. He was super passionate. And so in the break, I looked at him, man. I said, dude, you are killing it as a dad. Your support is amazing. And he looked at me and he said, I have no idea what is going on on that screen. I don't know what you're saying, but all I know is that my kid loves this. I've never seen him come out of his shell this way. So if it's doing that for him, I'm 100% behind it. And then at the end of the event, I've been in education for 14 years. I've coached high school sports. I've never seen kids line up and request autographs from some of their classmates. And so I still have this poster here uh, that the kids put together for me. And I have it hanging in the wall in my office because we all have those bad days. And anytime I have a bad day, I just look at that poster because it makes me feel like, man, we did that. And the impact that has had on those kids has been amazing. Uh, the other story I want to share is this is Michael Zhao. Uh, Michael is in our build, or he was in our building. He just graduated. Um, and the reason why I bring Michael up is because esports, in, in the esports world, Michael is like pretty close to the LeBron James. Um, he plays League of Legends and he's in Challenger. And for those of you who know what League of Legends is, you're talking about like 0.03% of the player base. So he's in the top, like, He's, he's a professional, like he's at the professional level. He hasn't gone professional, but he would be the equivalent of having like um, an NFL or an NBA superstar walking around your building. And the reason why I bring Michael up is because without esports, Michael had no way to show his talent. He's just walking around here and nobody knows how great he is. And so I'm going to show this clip uh, where he talks about and a couple of other students talk about what it meant to have the opportunity to play esports. And I'm going to have to jump ahead here real quick, so hopefully I can time it right. Oh, okay, whenever. Uh, the famer 
January was, it was one of the first few weeks we were playing against Battle. I was able to get like a lot of my, my school friends come and watch, even though none of them play League of Legends. Got the yeah, whole squad out. can absorb so much pressure. Oh, this is going to be it's yeah, another like triple kill. kill. And he's got the bear. And I think it was just a lot of fun to play. Um, it's really like the camaraderie between your teammates and like getting to play with your foes or your like adversaries, you know. It's fun to be rivals with other schools and you still get to be friends with them even if they are your rivals and that's the best part of it. I think it was a big boost to my confidence. Uh, and early on in high school, I ran cross country, and while I I learned a lot from cross country and I got into a lot of work ethic, I think that it was something I definitely wasn't good for in the fact that I'm not very fast. And I think it was cool having a sport that I really could excel at and I got to be at the level that I wanted to be and achieve success in the way that I really hoped I could. Um. And so that's just a, a little bit about their story. and. What's cool here is um, you'll see that they're wearing jerseys. Uh, and for this, for my, the students in my building, it was the first time a lot of them ever wore a jersey uh, for anything. They, they'd never worn a jersey for anything. And they had never put on Hickman gear for anything. And now uh, that we've had our program, so we had that eSports uh, scrimmage in, this, in the fall. We did our first league in the spring. And then we've now had our program for two more years. We have kids walking around wearing Hickman eSports gear in our building and sharing that with pride. And that's what we've seen. So down here, this picture here, this is a picture from our one half of our gaming room. And this is like the third day of Overwatch practice. And you can see how many kids we're involving in our program here that are showing up. And the cool thing that's going on here is these are people learning, these are students learning how to play Overwatch. These are our, this is our team members, and they're coaching and teaching them as they learn how to play. Esports means so much to me that I actually threw, this isn't even my high school. Uh, this is Battle High School. They just won the Overwatch Championship uh, here, I guess, District Championship over Rockbridge, which was a big upset for them. Uh, big in the fact that they're both good teams, but Rockbridge was undefeated. And when you just look at, you just look at this picture, and you look at the pride, the excitement, and everything else in it, Again, that's why we do this. We do this so that these kids, like they're never going to forget this moment probably for the rest of their lives. And we can say as CPS, we had a role that we played into it. The thing I always remember goes back to the student who I told you, uh, hopefully I believe ended up at Mo Valley. He said to me once uh, that he was gonna consider dropping out of school. He uh, had reached out to me with somebody that was mentoring. And I told him, uh, listen, we're gonna have the esports team back the next year and we were gonna play League of Legends again. And he told me that was the only reason why he came back to high school was to play on that team and we got him graduated. So again, like this is something that I think is a huge tool and a huge opportunity for us to engage students who aren't already engaged in the school environment. And so that way we can help them be academically successful. Uh, I had my superintendent, I was actually at a meeting yesterday and he gave me a compliment about our esports program. And so I said, hey, I'm doing this webinar, would you mind giving me a few lines? And so this is what he put for me. Uh, esports increases engagement in school and creates a sense of belonging for students. As a superintendent, when a student tells you esports is the first time he's ever felt connected to school, you know you've done, done something special for kids. As a parent of a kid involved in esports, it is a joy to see our own child experiencing such success and pride. And when I say this, like I would say this to my superintendent, you know, I understand that they kind of get the uh, the reputation for being political. Dr. Superman genuinely believes this because he's seen his middle child uh, have such joy of able to play esports. The other thing that happened was we had our freshman dinner and one of, I was sitting at a table with one of our freshman families and the, I could tell what the student was talking about. Um, he was so excited and his mom was just trying to contain his excitement. And he was telling her, I play on Saturday, play on Saturday, but I might be the sub. So if the other Reinhardt doesn't show up, uh, I'm going to be in and I want to make sure you're there and I make sure dad's there. And so she said, okay, go call your dad, go tell him. And so he ran off and I said, did he just make our Overwatch team? And he said, yeah, he made the Overwatch team. And she just looked at me and I say, I'm the principal. I just want to let you know that we're so excited to have that. And she looked at me and she said, I'm so excited you have it too. 
because I haven't been able to get my kid engaged in anything. I've been pushing him to try to make friends. I've been pushing him to try to join clubs and he won't do it. He won't do it at all. And it's been hard to get him to socialize and even talk to others. And she said, I don't know who my kid is right now. So the kid runs back to the table and I say to him, hey man, there's this guy over in a suit. He looks pretty important. He's about four tables down. Uh, that's my superintendent. Would you mind going over there and thanking him? He said, yeah, 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 I'll, go. I'll totally do it. So he ran down there and talked to him. And the mom looked at me and said, I don't know who my kid is anymore. Like this is somebody who would never do that uh, it, just a month ago. So again, I want to go back to, I'm going to hammer this a lot. We have seen so much engagement from kids. We've seen this as an opportunity to help develop them. It's been such a huge impact on our school. So what esports brings to the table? The chance for everyone to feel part of your school community. Opportunity, which we've talked about in scholarships and careers. Leadership and character development. One of the things, one of the big reasons why we have extracurricular activities in schools is to give us a medium where we can continue to develop the whole student. Accessibility. This is a big one. Like there's, there's very little limitations in esports for who can play or how they play. Uh, so I think this is something that really is an opportunity for some of your students who are looking for a way to engage that maybe don't have the physical means or other things that are preventing them from doing it. This is a way that you can get them involved as well, too. And I know the big buzzword, the 21st century skills, those skills are very much apparent here. Collaboration, problem solving, creative thinking. Uh, for I won't go into all the nerdiness, but when you see these students work together to game plan on how they're going to beat another team and the strategy that goes into it, it's that high rigor, high relevance that you're trying to recreate in your classroom going on naturally with these events. So where do you start? I always tell people start simple because when we bring up esports, people immediately go to, whoa, that's expensive. And that's because they think they have to build it before they'll come. And so their mind immediately goes to like my gaming lab or this one down here, which this is CBC in St. Louis. I have complete props to them for really setting a high bar on what esports looks like. And uh, I'm part of this group called the Missouri High School Esports Coaches Group. And it was funny because somebody said, hey, what are you guys all running with? And so we started shooting out texts of what our gaming rooms look like. And it was apparent that I've been very blessed in getting the resources there and other coaches are making their classrooms and things work. So I, I show this to you because this is not where you start. Okay. It's not build it. They will come. So it's not, do not feel the dreams it. your kids are already in your building doing this. So they're already there. You just have to tap into them. So please do not think you need all of this to make esports happen. Start simple. First, find a champion. And when you're looking for that champion, that champion doesn't have to be somebody who knows a lot about esports or knows a lot about video games. Uh, my champion in my district isn't me, which is kind of crazy, right? Like I'm the one here talking to you all about esports. My champion, the person that empowered me, was a gentleman by the name of Bruce Whiteside. Some of you may know him. Bruce is our district athletic director. I don't think D Bruce would be offended because I said it to him. Uh, he is the most typical athletic director you could think of. He is very passionate about his high school sports. He refs college football uh, on the weekends. And when he came to me one day and said, Tony, what do you know about esports? Because I really want to make it happen. Uh, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Like I, I never, I never thought this man would come to me and say, I want to make esports happen. And I look back at him and I say, actually, I know quite a bit about esports, and I would love to help you. So Bruce was my champion who empowered me to do those things. So I know a lot of you are in different positions, but maybe you're the person that doesn't know anything about sports, but you're the person that has access to a lot of resources and you can find somebody that has those things. You can be that champion. And champions come in all different forms and all different things, but you have to have that champion. Once you have that, find a space. Again, you don't need a fancy gaming lab uh, right off the bat. What you need to do is find a space where your kids and everybody can gather, a home base where you can start meeting with them. Once you have those two things, announce you're starting a club. See how many kids show up. Then let the kids drive the bus. So again, if you're somebody who doesn't know anything about esports, or even if you are somebody who knows a lot about esports, this should be about the kids. So talk to them. What are they playing? What are their goals? Do you want to be in a league? Do you want to compete for a state championship? What do you want to do? Let them drive the bus. Let them take ownership in it. 
And that is where you start off in the first couple steps, just doing those things. Find a champion, find a space, announce you're starting a club, then let the kids drive the bus. The other thing I threw this in here is if you're at, once you get past step three, join the Missouri High School Esports Coaches Group. I will have information on how to join that group here at the end of the slide. Uh, what that is is a completely grassroots effort. There is no cost or anything else like that. It's educators, IT people, uh, educators and IT, you guys are educators, um, across the state that are working together to support each other as we all venture into these new fields. Uh, so it's a great way for you to jump into the chat and say, hey, how do you all handle buying your games? Or how do you handle this firewall stuff? In the IT chat, they're speaking a different language. I don't understand it, but I can tell they're supporting each other because there are problems that come up as you try to do this. The other question I get, so you got your club, you got your, you got your meeting and everything else like that. Um, I've had a lot of school districts ask me, what games should we be playing? Uh, and so using the Missouri High School Esports uh, Coaches Group, here's the list of games that current Missouri high schools are playing. At the top of the list, oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Let's do this. Uh, that will depend on a number of factors, what games you play. Those factors include, what are your students currently playing? So if you have a bunch of kids playing League of Legends, maybe you're not forcing Overwatch. Or if you have kids playing a whole bunch of Overwatch, don't force them to League of Legends. You wanna to listen to them, you're creating a space for them. Uh, what do you have like resource wise? Um, structure, time, four. So something that should be of note, a game like League of Legends, the joke is you could play that on a toaster. So you don't need a high end system to play League of Legends. A game like Overwatch, on the other hand, you may need a dedicated graphics card. So if you're looking at your resources, you're gonna to have to take that into account. Uh, also the game will influence the number of computers you need. So League of Legends is 5v5, Overwatch is 6v6. And even another game that's really popular, we're we'll talking about in a second, is called Rocket League. And Rocket League, you can play 3v3. So if you only have access to six computers, maybe that's a game you look into. So what games you play is gonna be influenced by the resources and what you have time for. Uh, does your administrator have an opinion? School board, board policy. Uh, we had a school district out of St. Louis that came up here to play in our Overwatch tournament, and we were not allowed to use their full school name because there was a board policy that they have that their students are not allowed to play uh, games rated teen or higher uh, at school-sponsored functions. I, I personally have never heard of a policy that, but that is something that was in their policy. So before you decide on a game, you may want to review your policy and definitely consult with your administrator before you start doing it. Are you looking to play competitively or not? So school versus school or inter-school matches. Again, esports is a huge umbrella. If you're looking to get into a league or play other teams, uh, for example, like maybe you have a whole bunch of kids that love playing Madden. Well, unfortunately, there's no dedicated Madden esports league across the state. That doesn't mean you can't have a Madden league inside your building. You just may not be able to play school versus school. So if you're doing that, that will influence what type of games you want to play and what you want to do. So now what are Missouri schools playing? So the big top three are the Overwatch, League of Legends, and Rocket League. These three pretty much dominate the esports e uh, sports scene. I know for my more woke esports people in the, in the group, you're going to probably yell at me and say, but, 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 but. But if we have an honest reflection with ourselves, these are the big three. Uh, right below it is Super Smash Brothers. Uh, if you were gonna look at one to bump up into the fourth, this is one I know one of our middle schools does Super Smash Brothers in partnership with Yukatsu, and they have 80 students showing up to play Super Smash Brothers. So this would be another one uh, that would be, I, I would kind of consider. And then on the third tier here, there's kind of a mix of different games uh, that may, you may have groups of your students playing, uh, maybe not. But these four are generally what you're going to see from, from your kids playing. And then the next question I always get is handling video game violence. Um, and, that's, and that's, I know, somewhat of a controversial topic. I want to be completely honest and, and put my beliefs out in front of everybody. I do not believe violent video games cause violent behavior. I'm speaking in the eye. Uh, I, 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 that's my personal belief. I believe violent people probably play violent video games, but I do not think a person playing violent video games is more likely to cause violence. Um, I can use myself as an example. I've been playing video games since I was four. I, I remember when Mortal Kombat first came out and the huge stir that created, I was playing that. So far, I haven't committed any, uh, violent acts. Um, so I, I'm a walking testament that that's not true. 
uh, more so Call of Duty right now is the number one selling game. I have, there's no spike in violence. That being said, I am also a principal and I completely understand the community backlash and what it will look like if you bring in some of these games because I have dealt with it myself. Um, so my suggestion is use the ESRB rating system and ESRB gives you pretty much, there's, there's four uh, ratings that you'll, you'll want to know. E for everyone, team for team, M for mature. You're not going to touch any game for adults only. So we can just drop that code out. If that one don't, don't allow in your school. But when you look at these ratings for E for everybody, Rocket League falls in the E for everyone. It's, it's, it's literally what the picture shows here. It's people driving around cars, playing soccer, knocking a ball into the goal. Then of the T for team, you have your Overwatch and you have your League of Legends. Um, and when they do the rating T for team, it's basically the equivalent of a PG-13 movie. And so for school districts that are like, we're not going to touch shooters or we're not going to touch anything that's rated teen, I think that's an interesting statement because you're essentially saying that PG-13 uh, content is not appropriate for your school. And so I would ask, are you holding the same standard to your literature? Are you, are you holding the same standard to the movies that your teachers are showing or even maybe some of the content they're covering in their classes? So again, I don't say that like maybe some of my administrator brethren are saying, okay, Tony, you're kind of being a jerk here. Like, yeah, I kind of am because I think we have to be honest with ourselves when we look at this as an opportunity to engage our students and the fact that an independent board has said this is appropriate for students 13 and older. Where I won't push you as hard is, is in the mature 17 plus. I know there are some schools possibly in this group and around the state that are playing games like Rainbow Six Siege and playing Call of Duty. I'm not trying to say, if you're an administrator for one of those schools, I'm not saying stop it. That's not, that's not my message. When you get to the mature 17 plus, this is just where you, you wanna really take a gauge of your community, your school board and other things like that and see how it plays and make sure you're on point with your rationale. Because in my opinion, this is where you're going to get the most pushback because these usually have blood. There may be some cursing and things like that. So you, you just want to be prepared for it because honestly, like in my building, these are the three games we'll play. I haven't, um, I have a lot of kids that want to play Rainbow Six Siege and I'm still on the fence with it because I personally believe if colleges are giving scholarship money, then I want my kids to have a chance, which they are for Rainbow Six Siege. Um, but I just haven't uh, taken that conversation to my superintendent yet. So for the time being, these are the three games that we play. So phase two, building momentum. And then this phase, you want to talk about raising money. You'll need to evaluate your cost. Then you need to develop, be developing your elevator speech. Find a coach or sponsor, creating a team, and then joining a league. So the cost. Again, I use these two examples plus the games. Your costs are going to vary based on what current resources you have, the level of support you're, from your district, and then whatever equipment you want to buy. Some of the hardware you're going to be looking at is computer, monitors, keyboards, mouse, headsets, software-wise, the games. Uh, depending on what you do with a league, and we'll get into that in a little bit here, there could be league fees, and whether or not you want jerseys. What I will say is, is that money – is not an obstacle in my opinion now some of you may roll your eyes when i say that but when i say that statement i say we started at hickman high school with a very tight budget and before we got the fancy gaming stuff and everything else like that our kids were competitive and we were on a tight budget so you can you can make it work uh no matter the budget uh and i'll go over some of those options so one of the big things that I want to make sure, as I say, is that you don't need this quote unquote gaming computer. And this is what I call like what I would say is a gaming computer. I've built my fair share. At one point, I probably had a gaming computer that looked like this that had all the lights and the RGB and everything else like that. Um, I made this mistake when I first started doing this program or putting together. I really wanted my students to custom build their computer so I could teach them how to build a computer and the ins and outs and everything else. And I thought it was this really great idea until I went and presented the idea to Aaron, who's our head, like one of our heads of our IT. And Aaron just, just looked at me and said, that's not going to happen. Uh, to which he crushed my dreams, but then he added support and said, we, these are the reasons why we can't do it, all the security and everything else. And, and it made sense. I get it. And so that's when we entered a partnership with Dell and we looked to build a computer that, that fit our budget uh, and, and played both League of Legends and Overwatch. So, 
you don't you don't need this this fancy gaming machine. You can make it work. Uh, like I said, no matter the budget. So here's what here's what we've run. So the Hickman setup is this. Uh, we have the i5, we have a 1060 graphics card, eight gigs of memory. Uh, we did go a little short on the SSD only because I only planned for two games to be installed on that, maybe three, and that fits there. Now, while we did save money on the graphics card, I did splurge a little bit on the monitor. Uh, in eSports, what your, what your eSports athletes are going to care about is FPS, so frames per second, which comes from the power of the machine. Then also you have your refresh rate, which comes from your monitor. And so the refresh rate, I'm going to butcher this, uh, but I, I, I think in its simplest terms, it's just how fast the monitor is refreshing. So when you see a particle move across the screen, how fast you can see that or how smooth that looks. So if you have a better refresh rate, you can react even faster. And then the third thing they care about is the internet connection. So those are the big things. So knowing that I knew we had a tower that would give them the FPS they wanted. And I wanted to make sure it wasn't bottlenecked by a monitor that couldn't handle it. So um, our tower is this one right here. So it's very basic. Honestly, our kids don't care that it doesn't light up or anything else like that. They care that when they play, the game looks good and, they, and it doesn't impede their reactions. If I had a little bit more money in my budget, I would have probably done something like this. Uh, I would have gone with the, the 2060, I would have upgraded the SSD uh, and I would have thrown in more RAM. So this is a pretty good value. The other thing about this, when you think about the purpose of your room, you can have a dual purpose room. And this is also, both of these machines, this one more so than this other one, can do project lead the way work. So this is something that, again, if you're looking for that dual purpose or you're doing CAD or you're doing video graphic compression, things like that, this thing will handle it. Now, if you have a lot of resources, maybe you have a donor or you have a superintendent that's all on board or something like that, you can build this monster which is using the i9, the 2080, the 32 gigs of RAM. I mean, this thing will play video games, it will compress video, do CAD, and it will build you a sandwich all at the same time. So if you have the means of doing this, fantastic. That's amazing. Um, and this will be, you won't have, you won't need to upgrade that system or do anything for that for a long time. But I do get a lot of questions about what is the gaming hardware that you use or what does your spec looks like? This is what our school has used. Our school has been successful. You saw the kids holding their trophies. Like we are completely satisfied with this, with this setup uh, right here. So we have in our room, we have 13 computers. So we have 13 of these. 12 of those are for gaming. We got a 13th right now. That's what our coach kind of uses. Uh, but eventually what we want to look into is teaching our kids how to broadcast games. So we'll probably turn that 13th computer into a Twitch broadcasting machine. That being said, you want to deliver an authentic experience. So I, I encapsulated some things here like the signing, the chairs, the lighting, and, our, and our, our rug. This rug is a thing of legend in Hickman High School. Uh, I was meeting with some of my uh, student government leaders yesterday, and the first question they asked me is, where did you get that rug and how can we get one? They don't even game. Teachers come in there, parents come in there, they all want to see this rug. The other thing is the lighting. And this is, I got to give all credit to Eric for this because when Eric and I were in the early stages, we'd gone over to Columbia College and seen their gaming lab. And he was like, dude, you, you got to have the lights. You got to have the lights. I kind of thought it was kind of silly, but he's like, no, you got to have the lights. You got to have the lights. And the kids and everybody loves it because it gives that authentic feeling that you believe in this. You, you actually get it. And so these things, they're relatively cheap that you can do. The chairs, oh man, the chairs. When the kids see the official gaming chairs, because that's what they see their streamers. That's what they see the kids, the people they watch play video games. They see them sitting in these chairs. So now they feel like, oh, I'm a professional. Oh, I'm, I'm at that level. And so these are simple things that you can do with, with some money that helps increase their experience uh, and gives them the experience that you want them to have. So then building momentum, know your elevator speech. What is your why? Uh, what, why are you doing this? Because you're going to have to tell that to a lot of people, whether it's a school board or a foundation or uh, the media or anybody else like that. Um, use what's in the very beginning of this presentation and tell your story. Put those things together. You can, can you tell it in 30 seconds or less? Or can you hook my interest in 30 seconds or less? That's something that I always keep in mind because the people you may be talking to, they don't have a lot of time. They also may not understand esports or care about esports. So what can you tell them to help hook their interest? 
So this is an example of, of something I might say. So I wanna work with innovative people to help develop outside the box ideas to engage all of our students in school and provide a unique learning experiences. So when I go meet someone like Eric or when I go talk to my foundation, this is at the core of everything that I want them to hear. So once you have that elevator speech, you can then take that on the road. You can use it to recruit sponsors. And this is, I don't have this framed at my house. This is actually uh, Yukatsu because it's the jersey from our first year. But we use the jersey to put sponsors uh, on the back of it. Uh, and there's also, they also have them on the front. They have one sponsor on the front and then one on the sleeves. So that's an opportunity for you to look to uh, raise money for your program. Another opportunity, this is, um, this is League of Legends. And this is what Twitch looks like whenever we stream it. And you can put sponsorships here in different corners. Now this is kind of advanced, but again, when you look at it with your kids and you think about production, you can teach kids how to do this. And this is something that you can use to again, help raise money for your program. We've talked about foundations. So Columbia Public Schools, we have the Columbia Public Schools Foundation, which is a group of community individuals that raise money for Hickman. And it's all grounded in giving students learning experiences. And I went to them with my presentation. I showed them the first video that I showed you all. I call that video my $8,500 video because when I showed them that video and they saw the impact, they gave me an $8,500 grant to go towards the esports room. So you really want to work on getting to know who's in that foundation. And I think Eric and I talked about like the strategies and approaching foundations because there are some can be some political things that you want to be aware of when you go in. Um, so that's another resource. The instructional budget, can you use uh, that dual purpose room? Can it be a CAD classroom? Can it be, or can it be a project lead the way grant as well too? These are all ways, all things that you can do to try to raise money to get the resources for your kids. When it comes Tony, to your time check, we got about seven minutes till noon. Yep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speed it up. So finding a coach, uh, you've got, you always wanna start with find the kid, find the person who cares about kids. That's where you can start. I'm sure you can find someone in your building that knows something about video games just because there's a whole generation that grew up on them. But again, your best option, find someone who cares about kids. Also that Missouri eSports group is a great resource for you. So join that. We can help coach up or provide resources for anybody you find to champion your program. When you start your team, you need to think about your goals for your program. Do you wanna have a JV and a varsity? What is the criteria to be a member? We have a GPA requirement of 2.5. So that's something we've put on ourselves. When are your practice times? Where are you going to practice? If you don't have a lab, are you guys practicing offsite, like all at home? And then when are you meeting? Big thing is establish norms. We had to establish norms on how we talk to each other, how we treat our equipment and things like that. And then use it as an opportunity to promote student leadership. Elect a student leader, elect a captain. Joining a league, there are two or there are four leagues, I would say that are predominantly out there. Those that cost money, these two, Play Versus and High School Esports League, I've not played in either of them, so I'm not going to talk about my personal experiences because I don't have them. But I will say, play if you're a school that's doing Overwatch and League of Legends, you're going to have to pay to be in both of them because Play Versus doesn't do Overwatch and High School Esports League doesn't do League of Legends. So if you're doing that, you're going to have to pay for both leagues, but they connect you with people, other schools across the nation, uh, and you can play other people. Then there's those that are free. So the North American Scholastic Esports Federation actually just announced a free nationwide League of Legends tournament that starts in February. And then the Missouri High School Esports Coaches Group, we are working on our first statewide Overwatch uh, League. So both of these options will be free. I'll have more information on this one here. Aaron, you have five minutes. All righty, let's go with this. So my name is Aaron Heath. I am the Assistant Director of Technology Services and the Information Security Officer for Columbia Public Schools. Uh, I guess let's just start uh, from the get-go. So Tony and uh, Bruce came to me with this idea of putting together a uh, e-sports gaming thing and uh, we kind of had discussions there starting up. But I didn't want to crush Tony's dreams of building white box machines but I kind of pointing out a few things that uh, could come in the way of uh, operations and stability with the gaming club. So uh, we decided to get in touch with uh, Dell and that's kind of how we got Eric involved. And it's been a very successful thing. So I'm sure a lot of people have been asking about just like what exactly infrastructure wise you need for operation of the game. 
Uh, one of the big things that Tony kind of alluded to is you don't have to have extreme monster to play these games. Probably one of the biggest things is processor and uh, video card memory because the refresh rate is what's probably the most beneficial thing and bandwidth. Um, our school district, uh, we are very lucky to have a uh, 10 gig uh, connection to our ISP. Uh, it's kind of a big thing for us that uh, with the amount of traffic that we do it, and we use it. So if uh, bandwidth's a consideration, that's something that uh, you might want to look into to prove it. Uh, as far as questions go, uh, does anyone have anything specific they want to drop in the question and answer box or anything like that? Uh, some of the other things that we did was uh, we uh, had concerns about students playing games during the day. Uh, so we actually have a timed rule within our firewall that turns on the game ports uh, that are allowed uh, after four o'clock. And we actually subnetted the game machines within their entire own subnet within the school. This allows us to give some control to those machines uh, with the firewall rule and the filtering rules. Uh, we use iBoss as our filtering and allows us to schedule the times that the game uh, blacklists are opened up to whitelists and Twitch is open for them to use for uh, chat and some other things. Uh, Here, Tony Butler asked, are the machines domain joined? Yes, all of our machines are domain joined. Uh, we actually have them uh, administrated through our system center configuration manager. So we push updates to them, Windows updates, uh, make sure that they are all within compliance of our security requirements to be on our network. Uh, there's nothing that uh, we do that hurts as far as gameplay goes. Uh, it's something that uh, we said if we were going to do this, we were going to do it. And we were going to do it right. Uh, the last thing you want is the ability to uh, have the machines get out of spec and become a security threat. So that's why we actually uh, monitor them pretty uh, extensively. They do actually have admin rights on those machines. The students do when they log in. Uh, so you be prepared that you will have some times that you will have to. Uh, Reimage the machines if they kind of get out of spec. Let's see here. So right band here. There's some other non-technical questions here as well. So we still got. I still got uh, just a little bit more to get through in two minutes. Is it good if I power through it? You go right ahead, sir. Yeah. I think All right. I don't see any more technical questions. Thanks, Aaron. So Missouri and esports. So st there's a lot of states that have uh, esports statewide sponsored leagues. So Missouri, unfortunately, is not breaking any new ground. So this isn't anything that's unique. The Missouri schools doing esports. There are currently 23. Now it's 25 because we have more joining our group every day across the state that are doing esports. Uh, this group again was established two months ago, and we'll probably eclipse 30 by the end of next week. And because we have new schools joining this group weekly. We talk about forming a statewide league. I just got an email that Misha is looking at this as an emerging activity in their January meeting. And so we had, that is the first step in, in seeking Misha eligibility. So if you are someone here that's not a superintendent, principal, athletic director, you need to tell them that your school wants to do esports or you're interested in doing esports so that way they can say that in the meeting because Mish is going to want to just kind of get a straw poll of what's going on. While that's going on, the MHSEC group is working, like I said, on the first statewide Overwatch League. We are looking to start that league in February and run to April. Don't be intimidated if you've never, if you've got kids that want to play Overwatch but they've never played together on a team, put them in the, put them in the league. Like, just let them have that experience. They may uh, get beat by some of the schools that have been playing it for a while. But we saw it when we did our tournament here at Mizzou, regardless of how they ended, the kids were just excited that they could compete. Uh, we are going to do a live Final Four event. Again, it's free. And then we're going to try to work on two more seasons with League of Legends and Rocket League uh, for the 2020-2021 school year. So supports, Again, join the Missouri High School Esports Coaches Group. I used a tiny URL here. If you write that down, that will take you to our Google page. At the bottom is the invite to join our Discord group. So jump on that to get access to them. We also have an upcoming free high school esports conference that's going to be sponsored by Yukatsu and Dell. Uh, that's in the sum this summer 2020. We're using it as a coaching clinic. Again, more advice on how to build your program bringing esports in the classroom. If you're interested in that, again, join the Missouri Esports Group. If you look in the top right corner on that webpage, it says register. Register there, and I can 
use that email list to get you the information about it. And then you can always email me. Uh, there's my email. I've had leaders across the state reach out to me. I am a principal. I have a busy schedule. Uh, but that being said, I will find time to answer your questions and call you. Or even if you need me to show up to a school board meeting, that's fine. I'm doing that not of any self-interest. I want our kids to experience this. I want our kids to have other schools to play against because again, I believe this is such a powerful thing that can really help our kids and something that they will be very passionate about. So recap, this is a thing. It's about kids. To get started, start simple. Find a champion, find a space, put up a poster, let them know you're doing it, develop your elevator speech, and then join the Missouri High School Esports group. I went two minutes over, Eric, sorry about that, but I can take some of the questions there uh, and, and do my best to answer them. Yeah, absolutely. If any, I don't want to keep anybody from launch. So, you know, if you have to, uh, Jeff, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'll run through the questions here for you, Tony. Um, do you have minimum requirements for students to be a part of the club? Yeah, so the minimum requirements are you have to be enrolled at Hickman High School and you have to maintain a GPA above a 2.5. We're currently a club right now. So we, again, without the athletic thing, uh, we wanted to put something in because we did want to use this as a tool to help students improve their grades. All right. uh, do you have dedicated school accounts or allow the students to use their personal gaming accounts? Yeah, so uh, games like League of Legends and whatnot are free, so they can do that. But if you're looking at a game like Blizz or Overwatch, which is done by Blizzard, uh, most of our kids who've been playing for a while, they come with their own accounts, and so they log into that. But because we believe in accessibility and equity, um, I have used some money, and the club has raised some money to purchase generic accounts that the kids have access to. All right. Uh, as far as game ratings, did you front load the conversation about the ratings? Um, the question comes from uh, someone where their district approved the esports club but for uh, uh, only for E games. And so they're only able to play Rocket League. So maybe some advice about how those conversations went. And um, So I've always been transparent with my administration, uh, my district leadership, because they'll probably hear about anything uh, before me. Um, and so I just, I just be candid with them and my superintendent, I had him sit down and play overwatch. So that way, whenever the parents and everybody came and yelled at him, he could say, no, I was legitimately throwing pixie dust at another character. This isn't what you think it is. Um, so I think when you, when you're looking for that, I completely understand where district leaders are going because they want to play it safe. And I completely get it. Like I said, I've been in those conversations, but I think, exposing them to it, showing them it, and then also you having your kids put voice to it as, as some of those ways to get them to expand uh, their opinion of video games and what they think they're about. Perfect. Um, hey, Tony, would you post the link to the MHSEC website in the chat so people can grab that while you're doing yeah. that? If Aaron, you're still there, I'll um, toss you a technical question. Can you talk about the support time load um, on the IT side? Uh, yeah, we actually, the machines that we bought, of course, were Dell, which makes it a little bit easier because we have some good drivers and everything like that. So we actually had the ability to build an image on them. So it has our standard Windows 10 image or Windows 10 across the entire school district uh, in our production environment. Um, so uh, support is not really that big. I mean, you know, once you get them imaged and everything like that, if there's a problem with them, you just re-image them. Uh, the games are automatically put back on them. So uh, the download updater and stuff like that, we have some firewall rules and stuff. And if uh, someone needed some help with uh, that side of it, we can let them know. So we'll actually post uh, our firewall rule and what we have, what we turn on. So you're aware of what you have to do without having to research it. You're going to post that? Is that a good idea? Yeah, I can, I can post the, the portfolio. I'm just with you. Yeah, and also play versus post the same thing. So it's not, I don't, I mean, I don't think it's super secret information. Okay. No, it's all so posted on the game now. sites. Um, another question, uh, it's a two-parter. What kind of lights are those? I'm going to find those in my Amazon account and, and send those out. It was $150. It was a light kit uh, for, for decks that I never used. So it was in my basement. I donated to Columbia, but um, 
So I'll send that out. I'll also, I've been playing around with hue lights and how to hack those on the cheap to, for another look. I'll send that out as well. And then there was a question on who made your rug, Tony? <laughs> uh, that was Columbia Prints and Signs here. Um, and I think you'll find other companies that do those. Those are, that's essentially like the, like, I hate to use the term, but the floor mat that people like wipe their feet on when they come into your building and they were able to do a custom print on that. So, um, I just sent them our logo and they were able to do that. Very cool. Well, I don't think we have any questions uh, oh. left. So thank you. And Tony, thanks to you. Um, yeah, thanks. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to everybody. And like I said, um, please, 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 if you need any assistance in getting your program going or if you have any questions, again, join the group and then feel free to email me. And I'm completely fine if I need to come to your school district to help you advocate. I will find time to do that. Perfect. Hey, thanks, everyone. Uh, Tony Travis Buck has a question. If we use a gaming concepts curriculum in tandem with eSports. Oh, not yet, but I want us to get there. So I, I, I'm going to, I want to, I want to work on that. Not trying to plug anything Dell here. I just want to keep it neutral, but um, we do have some curriculum that we developed around esports for gaming concepts and some of the other aspects of bringing in other uh, CTE courses into the fold and uh, their relationship to esports. So whoever your Dell counterpart is can, uh, get you some information on that as well because that is a big kind of next phase of where esports is going so um, is the competitive side for schools strictly pc or are consoles used um that's a great question right now it's been pretty much pc that being said like your kids who are playing overwatch on console you they can plug their controller into the pc and, and use it xbox 360 controllers work flawlessly PlayStation 4 controllers are a little bit more of a struggle. There's a workaround for that. So we have kids that play on the PC using a keyboard and mouse, but we also have kids who play on the PC using a controller. Awesome. I have no problem hanging out here for another minute because a couple of questions did come in. Yeah, uh, I can, I can right. stick around. We're out of questions right now. But if anybody, we're here for you if you want to post something. We also have one of our workstation specialists on as well. So if there's a technical configuration question about graphic cards and things, we can uh, answer those. Oh, thank you for who answered you what UX is. That's awesome. There's multiple people. <laughs> Here's a question. A lot of my students have expressed interest in Call of Duty. Is there any com competitions related to that? Uh, yeah, there's there's competitions all over the place related to um, Call of Duty. You can, you can find different independent tournaments or anything else like that. I just don't think you're going to see too many schools jumping at the opportunity for that. But there are definitely uh, schools around the state that are interested. Um, I, I hate to sound like a, a beating a dead horse here, but in that Missouri esports group, there's a, 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 a Google sheet that we have where you can put in what games you want to play and you'll see what other schools are playing. And then you can set up scrimmages or matches against those schools. I've heard a lot about shout casting and involving that in your esports team. Yeah. Do you know any teams who have included this position with their program? I don't. I don't. Um, and that's like the next evolution of ours that uh, I want to do. I, I really want to open up the ability for our students to do the play by play and put in the production. So. Can you explain shout casting? I'm not even sure I know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> so shout casting is essentially like the color commentary. So take your average uh, college football game, baseball game, NFL game, basketball game. You got people doing the play-by-play. -play. They call it shout casting in esports because 
the casters get talking so fast that it's hard to understand them. And then they get really loud as they get more excited. And so it literally turns into yelling um, into, into the mic. And it's just them encapsulating like what's going on so that you can, you can feel the emotion uh, of what's, what's, what's occurring in the event. So uh, when people say, what are shout casting? They're really just, what they're saying is, is who can help with the, teach kids to do the play, play by play, the production, but shout casting is just representative of the culture of esports. Very cool. <laughs> oh, here we got a couple more. Uh, do the teams travel to the opposing team school or is it all done online? So for, if I'm speaking about uh, Columbia Public Schools experience, we go to Yukatsu, which hosts the events and plays there uh, and play there. I'm a big fan of live events. I think that is the best way that allows parents to interact and see their kid play and the kids can shake hands and do all that type of stuff. That being said, I also understand that that's super expensive and not, I don't think it's a reality right now where we're at in esports personally. Uh, I do think it's something that's coming down the pipe, but in the meantime, um, most schools, like if we were going to play a school in St. Louis or something like that, we would probably play them online. I know that our League of Legends team was scrimmage, scrimmaging against Parkway West, and they did that through online, and so they played each other there. That's the format that the Missouri High School Esports Coaches Group is looking at doing is online until the Final Four for the state championship, and then we'll do that live. And then on those online events, you, teams are required to have a coach or an adult present that will check everybody in and remains with them for the duration of the game. Whenever it comes to League of Legends or other games in general, using our current equipment, would it be possible for our IT to change the firewall to allow current computers to download and play these games? I don't know if uh, Aaron, did Aaron check out. He did. Uh, that that seems that would that would be do that's within IT's ability. Whether they'll do that for you, potentially, would be a different story. Yeah, I think the technology is there. Um, something that we also did before we enabled um, the ability to access the game during the day is our IT person on site would just download the patch onto a thumb drive and then manually update all the games. Um, how long is a typical competition? Oh, great question. Uh, it, de it depends. Uh, you're probably looking at anywhere between 30 to minutes to an hour. Uh, for a League of Legends match, Overwatch is around the same. Now, if you have two teams that are of equal quality, it will go a little longer. If you have one team that's clearly more dominant than the other, it's going to go a little shorter. Do uh, esports follow a season like other high school sports? Um, kind of. Uh, if we're talking about the professional scene, League of Legends is played in the fall, spring, and summer. I believe Overwatch follows a similar format. What we've talked about is the Missouri High School Esports Group is following a Misha type thing where maybe the spring is Overwatch, the fall is League of Legends, and then the winter is Rocket League. Does the coach manage the Twitch YouTube channel or would you give that over to the kids? Good question. Oh, that is a great question. Um, we haven't, we haven't gotten to that yet because the, the stuff, the clips I was, show, I was showing you were all products of what you caught to uh, put, put together. Uh, but just from a principal standpoint, I think that the coach or sponsor or teacher, if it's a class, is is the ultimate say on what gets put up and managed because if you don't have oversight over that there's definitely a gateway to get some 
content put up there that you 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 don't want to get put up. So I don't. I, I would imagine that you could arrange it to where there's some uh, uh, approval, like you have, to, you have to give permission before it, or the kid has to submit it to the coach, and then they put it up. That that would be my suggestion. As much as I want to trust and empower kids, um, I would not want them to have control over something that could potentially go viral and has my school district or school's name all over it. Does the school have a, do you guys have your own school owned Twitch account or? No, we haven't, we haven't gotten into the water. We haven't gotten into the waters of Twitch yet as a school. Again, Yukatsu does a lot of the production and the play by play you heard in the first clip. Um, so we haven't had to do that yet. That would fit into that area that I want to continue to grow our program to where our kids can run. Not, I mean, they're doing the casting and they're doing things like that. Okay, Tony, I think that's it. Hey, nice job. Oh, cool. All right. Sounds good. Thanks again. Right. Thanks, everyone. Oh, yep. Later.